We have a section of trachea stained with hematoxylin and eosin. Trachea, as we know, is the tubular structure, and histologists divide trachea into four distinct layers of different tissues. These layers are mucosa, submucosa, cartilage, and adventitia. With the exception of cartilage, most tubular structures in the human body are composed of the layers mentioned earlier. Three out of four layers are clearly visible here. These four layers, starting from the middle, this is the inside of trachea, are mucosa, which is made up of pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium, a basement membrane just below the epithelium, and a layer of loose connective tissue. Basement membrane is made up of fibers, and submucosa, which extends from here to here, is composed of slightly denser connective tissue as compared to loose connective tissue of mucosa. It is rich in elastic and collagen fibers. Elastic material of submucosa makes it possible for trachea to stretch and move down slightly with inspiration and then recoil back to its original position during expiration. It is also rich in serial mucous glands. There are 16 to 20 highline cartilages in trachea which keep trachea open during external ex respiration, especially prevent it from collapse, collapsing during expiration. Only smooth muscle in trachea is known as tracheal's muscle, which along with fibroelastic tissue holds open ends of C-shaped cartilages together. It also adds to the elasticity of trachea. So cartilages are C-shaped, which are open uh, from the posterior side, and tracheal's muscles hold these two ends together. Adventitia is not visible here, but it is also a layer of connective tissue that attaches trachea to the outside structures of thoracic cavity. Adventitia thus encircles the trachea from outside and holds it in position with other structures within the mediastinum. All these layers and subcomponents have been discussed in details in next few videos that are uploaded on the website. All these videos should give you enough knowledge about microscopic and macroscopic anatomy and its role in physiology to understand the common diseases of a respiratory system. Thank you very much.